All right, here we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Poll Rundown. Today, we are going to be going over the lovely Wilderness Poll. As you all know, of course, Jagex released the Wilderness Rejuvenation, and now we're adding some things, tweaking some things, making it so that it is absolutely perfect, absolutely where we want it to be. It's going to be a good time. So let's start off right away. The first two questions are very simple. Two of the most popular demi bosses, the crazed archaeologist. It's actually the crazy archaeologist, but they keep calling him the crazed archaeologist. Not sure why. Um, and obviously, the chaos fanatic are having drops added to them. Co two different cosmetic rewards. The first one, a fedora. Sure, why the hell not? I'm cool with his fedora. It's a pretty swaggy thing. I'd be absolutely okay with that. And the most important one, which if you vote no, you hate America or something along those lines. You just hate yourself. Um, the pet. Chaos Elemental, the little Chaos Ellies that follow around the Chaos Fanatic. If you haven't seen my stream or seen any of the, the clips, he has little miniature Chaos Elementals around him, and they're adorable, and I want one, so absolutely yes. Now, here is a big one. One of the biggest pieces of dead content on upon release of Ye Olde Wilderness Rejuvenation was the Fountain of Rune. Now, this should be able to fix that. Should you be able to recharge your Amulet of Glory, Skills Necklace, and Combat Releases out the Fountain of Rune and receive six, char six charges rather than the usual four? Believe it or not, they actually started off offering you five charges. I guess they buffed it up to six, so that's cool. Um, you, will be able, you will have to have access to the Heroes Guild to do this, so people who don't have Heroes Quest done, stuff like that, um, you still won't be able to do this, but... Regardless, it's offering kind of a better use for the Fountain of Rune. It's offering some, you know, at least some... It's throwing some people who might be skilling or something. Throwing them out there to the Fountain of Rune. It's a good thing. Um, I don't think it's overpowered adding more glories, you know, more glory charges. I'm totally okay with it. It is so hard to efficiently charge multiple glories up there safely um, that I have absolutely no problem with this. Again, the same thing with the skills necklaces. Who's charging skill necklaces? No one really cares. And the same with combat bracelets. If you're bringing more than four, you're risking quite a bit of money, thus making you a big, you know, you're just putting a huge target on your back. So I'm all for adding that. I think it's a very smart idea. In the same vein, um, they are once again thinking about adding some charges to the Ring of Wealth. More than half of you watching this video right now know that the Ring of Wealth, or should know, that the Ring of Wealth is completely useless. It has no use. If you are using the Ring of Wealth, you're doing it wrong. End of story. It is terrible. It does nothing. Giving it some teleports, as well as letting you get it, give it some charges, um, whether it be from the Fountain of Rune or, you know, otherwise, I'm all about it. Add some usefulness to the Ring of Wealth. I'm all about it. Should we add Ancient Warrior armor sets? Not the weapon. Thank you for the subscription. This video is currently live on my Twitch channel. I had a feeling the chat was talking about it. Thank you so much for the sub, Dzanvu. Give him some sub hype. You are now in a video. <laughs> anyway, should we add Ancient Warrior armor sets, not the weapons, similar to armor sets of Morgan, Stadius, and Zuriel to the drop list of the three wilderness bosses? I was flip-flopping on this a lot. I received a very well-thought-out message from a viewer of my stream, and that is why I am voting yes, because these armors are degradable. They are they're very good. They're not overpowered. As you can see, we're not getting Vesta. Vesta was the big strength bonus gear. Stadius is very tanky. Zuriel's and Morgans kind of don't have much use at all. They're just like a tier up from what we already have. Regardless, adding degradable armors, permanently degradable armors, to the drop log of the three main bosses, or I guess, um, I guess this includes the KBD. Either way, um, those bosses are going to lose a lot of attention once the D-Pick kind of, you know, sinks into normality and all that sort of stuff. So adding something that will constantly need to be coming into the game um, or constantly have a demand in theory is a good thing. Again, um, Morgans and Zuriels, not super overpowered. Stadius, very good defensively, does offer some bonus. That's probably going to be very valuable. So again, adds a little bit more incentive to kill the wildy bosses. I think it was necessary after doing a bit of thought. So absolutely, I'm voting yes for that. Should the Lava Dragon drop a Lava Dragon scale, which can be used to make an extended anti-fire potion? I think this is a really cool thing. I don't think the game needs it. But I also don't think that it has a huge impact on basically the game as a whole. Anti-fire potions last long enough for at least someone like me, 
that, you know, this potion, I'll never need to use it. So, fact of the matter is, this may be dead content upon release. However, it does add something to Lava Dragons. Again, adding more incentive to go out there. So, I am all about it. Number seven, should we add an NPC inside the resource area who can note any item gained from the area for the cost of 50 GP per item? Sure. Add something to the resource arena. I think this maybe makes it a little, a little, adds a little bit more incentive to be in there. Um, banking is the big thing with that resource arena. Um, or area, excuse me. So I think adding a way for skillers to stay there as long as they possibly can um, for relatively cheap. Again, this only really affects if you're cutting magic logs, I'd say. I think 50 GP is a little expensive. Um, I think they need to rework how much they're charging people to get in there because in theory, even if you have a looting bag, if you're sitting in there cutting magic logs, just having to pay, I think it's 7K to get in there. I could be wrong. I'm wrong on that. I'm, I'm absolutely sure I'm wrong about that. Either way, um, you have to cut six logs just to get back to break even. So there is a, you know, there is kind of a, a price to pay for skilling in the wildy. They really did need to offer something that, you know, let you stay there forever or something. I'm not sure how I feel about the 50 GP, but I think it'll help a little bit. So I am voting yes. While chopping the log from a dead end, should you have a chance of getting a bird's nest? Why the hell not? You're cutting things now. On to one of the biggest questions in this entire poll. Should Dark Crabs heal 24 instead of 22? Absolutely yes. Right now, Dark Crabs heal 22. They are on par with tuna potatoes, and they are almost 50% more expensive. There is no reason anyone should buy Dark Crab right now. Just plain and simple. There is absolutely no reason. Dark Crabs need some more incentive. They need a population of people making these. 24 health is going to do that. There is already so few of them in the game. It's not like bots are going crazy, botting dark crabs, you know? And even if they were, this should drive the price up even more, despite the fact that they're already like 2.5k each or something ridiculous. Regardless, it makes the skilling arena, again, adds attention to that skilling arena or area. Gosh, I just want it to be, I want it to be an arena of skilling where the best skillers from all over the world come and skill their heart to their heart's content and then we kill the one who doesn't do as well regardless i would like to see the dark crabs heal more i think they need a bit more incentive as well as they were kind of just dead content on release there was really no reason to fish them that's all should the red chinchampas in the wilderness be changed to become black chinchampas with a hunting requirement of 73 and a ranged requirement of 65 these will be slightly more powerful than red chinchampas um again a question that i was not familiar with until i looked over the poll today um, really haven't done a whole lot of thinking on this one. Um, chinning is not exactly overpowered. You pay a pretty penny to chin. I think adding, in theory, this is adding faster hunter training, but for obviously a lot more risk, um, but it also offers a lot more reward. So I think it's, I think for now it's fairly balanced. Um, whether or not people will actually use this for training, I personally did my 99 range without throwing a single chin champa because I'm a nice guy. That being said, I think this is okay. I think this is a good incentive to get those chins, you know, to where they should be, where that should be, uh, you know, with the amount of bots in the normal hunting spots, we kind of need some more drive to go hunt chinchampas in the wildy. So that should do it. Should there be a chance to loot hard level clue scrolls from the chest in the rogue's castle? Um, through the last update, they kind of nerfed the rogue chests. They made it so you couldn't lure the rogues, um, which basically made it so that low levels couldn't really loot the rogue chests effectively. Um, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't add clue scrolls, you know, no one's going to get third age from a clue. Just I, just face it, you're not going to. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Anyway, I think that's okay. I don't see any balance issue with that, so I'm totally okay with that. Should we increase the limit of ecumencial keys or ecumenical keys, excuse me, to five? These are, for those of you unfamiliar, the keys that let you enter God Wars dungeon boss rooms without getting any kill count. You get them by killing monsters inside of the God Wars dungeon in the wilderness. So... Do we increase that limit to five? Absolutely. I think the limit now is three. I thought at first there was an unlimited amount and that they were reducing the limit to five or at least inputting a limit. Um, I'm okay with having five at once. That seems reasonable. They're relatively difficult to get. You can't camp AVNCs for them. Um, they kind of added that as a balance feature. So it's only the, the higher level stuff that is dropping these. And for something like God Wars, which needs a little bit more traffic going to it, um, and for the fact, of, the fact of the matter is kill count is a bitch. So I'm totally okay with anything that, you know, if I choose to go to God Wars, prevents me from having to do that god awful kill count. Should God Dragon Hide Armor and God Rune Armor, which are acquired from Clue Scrolls, receive a one, a prayer bonus of plus one per item? 
Um, this would definitely help boost some, you know, boost some value into clue scrolls. Um, I really want to vote no, but at the same time, I really want to vote yes because it'll make clue scrolls more valuable in the long run. So I'm not really sure what to do on this one, and I've been tor I've been completely torn. Um, I think I'm going to vote yes and leave it up to the people who aren't torn. Again, one of the things with this whole 75% vote thing is if anyone is, for any reason has like one thing wrong, you know, they'll probably vote no. Again, I don't think this is terribly imbalanced. There's better prayer gear out there. Obviously, this isn't taking over the slot of monk robes or initiate. It's one per item. So at max, if you're wearing full Zami Dehyde, you're getting plus four. Um, and again, pieces like the Vams and the Chaps, you know, really have no value right now, especially the Guthix pieces. There's really no reason to own them. The other ones, you know, have they have their use, you know, kind of have their usefulness at God Wars. But um, other than that, they're really just dead content. So adding a little bit of value to Clue Scrolls, um, despite the fact that I don't think these items should have prayer bonus, I'm going to vote yes just because I think Clue Scrolls need a bit of a buff with the absence of free-to-play, of course. We see that Clue Scroll items are not worth as much as they used to be, so I'm voting yes there. Should we allow players to add their kill death count in PvP worlds in the vicinity of the respawn points? Obviously. Don't know why this is even a question. Don't know why we even pulled this in the first place. But yes, absolutely. And finally, on to the last question. Should we replace the Dragon Hatchet's special attack with an ability which will temporarily increase your woodcutting level by 3? Yes, yes, and more yes. Not only is the D-Hatchet a very low price right now, but the Dragon Pickaxe has a similar effect. It makes only perfect sense to give it to the dragon hatchet you bet your ass i will be at drag be at dag kings if this vote passes because the d hatchet will go up a little bit in price so that is it for today's poll rundown thank you so much for watching really do appreciate it feel free to check me out on my live stream six days a week every day but saturday sorry kids you won't be able to watch me on saturday regardless that's where i am most of the time when i'm not here on youtube guys thank you so much for watching hope to see you in the next poll rundown happy voting and as always see you in the next one Peace.